Good morning and welcome to the United Benefice of Holy Innocence and St. Mark in South Norwood. You're very welcome from wherever you're joining us to our usual 10 o'clock Mass according to common prayer. We meet in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. As we prepare to receive from God in word and sacrament, we say together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us new hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Prayers of Penitence Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray our collect for today, the fourth Sunday of Easter. 
Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We listen to our readings now from Holy Scripture. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. Many were baptized and were added to the community. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, and to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. The psalm is Psalm 23, and the response is, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He revives my soul and guides me along the right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. Second reading, a reading from the first letter of Peter, chapter 2, verses 19 to 25. Brothers and sisters, it is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to your shepherd and guardian of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. We sing our first hymn. Thank you. 
Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive for evermore. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said to the Pharisees, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, as the sheep hears his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved, and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our sermon today is brought to us from John Philipson, one of our parishioners at Holy Innocence. Good morning. My name is John, and it's a joy to be able to share some reflections on the scripture used in today's service. I pray that you're all managing to survive both physically and mentally through these extraordinary times. So how is lockdown going? How are you coping? How are you feeling? Some of the scripture for today asks these questions of us, and we all deserve some space to answer them before God in an honest and open way. Part of the problem I have when asked how things are is that the pandemic has changed the metrics rather. Those benchmarks against which we as a society judge issues have noticeably changed. And so when pitching how we feel, various yardsticks have been recalibrated. I'm lucky enough to have my own fairly standard house, but often wish for a bigger garden than my 30 feet of lawn. However, in the last month, I have never felt more grateful for every square inch of that lawn and feel like a king for being able to sit outside and enjoy the sunshine during lockdown. Lockdown has recalibrated my satisfaction level with my garden. Each Thursday evening, I stand outside my house and clap whilst waving to all my neighbours, some of which I've never spoken to. I don't know why I do this, except that it feels like the right thing to do. Healthcare workers have gone from being considered by many as unskilled cheap labour to invaluable heroes. An old man on a sponsored walk around his garden raises £28 million for the NHS. The ozone layer is apparently healing itself. Things have changed. But alas, not only for the better. Death rates in some hospitals have been hugely increased. Calls to domestic abuse helplines have tripled. Demand on food banks has emptied their shelves. And the economy is in freefall. Things have changed over the last few weeks. Sometimes when you read passages from the Bible, you come across a phrase or a sentence which really speaks to you in a powerful way. It's sometimes like God didn't really think you were concentrating, so slips in a phrase which hits you around the back of your head. A bit like your old history teacher when he caught you doodling in the margin of the textbook. In today's Psalm, Gospel and both readings, a certain phrase has spoken to me this morning. They are like four sparkling jewels of the readings. And I'd like to thread them together for you, but like a scriptural bracelet to help you get through another week of lockdown. I'm doing my best to keep in touch with family and friends. 
but it's little like hearing the single line of a complex piece of music. I get to hear lots of different tunes, but I'm really, really missing the symphony of all those different voices being together. The first reading talks about the success of the early church in adding to their community. They were seeing many signs and awe came over them. But it's this next phrase that shone from the page for me. All who believed were together and had all things in common. Now, I'm not sure I could say that I have all things in common with my brothers and sisters in Christ, but I know I have enough that we are together. They're not able to meet. They're not able to see each other. Through our faith, we are together. And through our faith, we do have all things in common. God binds us, not just to himself, but to each other. And there is no stronger bond. We are not alone in this. Psalm 23 is one of the clearest pieces of contract that God offers us. It explains the deal. As a Christian, the deal isn't follow me and I can help you avoid all the tricky and difficult bits of life. It will all just be peachy. If that was the deal, we wouldn't all be hiding from a pandemic. The deal is in verse four. You know what? It's a good deal. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff comfort me. We will have to endure the darkness, but as Christians, we will not endure it alone. And God will use everything at his disposal to give us comfort. This pandemic isn't a sign of God forsaking us. He's holding each one of us and he's holding those who we are not able to hold. I felt weighed down during this lockdown. There were conversations I would have had differently if I'd known that would be the last time I'd see a friend for many weeks. There are some people I wish I'd forgiven more. There are some I wish I'd apologised to more. And the restriction on seeing people makes me feel the weight of these regrets. In the first letter of Peter, he talks about how Christ did not return abuse, did not threaten when he suffered. And all those things which we aspire to. Then he reminds us of this simple but life-changing fact. Christ bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sin we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. This promise takes the load we feel on our shoulders of regret and frees us to live for him and to love for him. So to finish our scriptural bracelet we look to the gospel which is full of sheep, gates and bandits. And I'm going to let Mother Roxanne work her way through the ins and outs of that gospel next time it comes around. It's far above my pay grade. But the gospel ends with some pertinency today when it talks of a thief that comes only to steal and kill and destroy. It feels like there is a thief among us and this we have to discern what God wants for us. The gospel is very clear what God wants for us and says, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. So it's not just life, but life in abundance. If you feel like you're just about surviving at the moment, this gospel tells us that is not what God wants for you. You just surviving is not good enough for God, neither should it be for you. So be vigilant for the signs of God's work, the kindness, the thankfulness, the bravery, the sacrifice, all signs of God at work in this darkness. And know that for you, his chosen one, only life in abundance is good enough. So wear your bracelet with pride this week. Whilst the world around us has changed beyond recognition over the last month, in God, all is the same. All is steadfast. All is safe. In his eyes, we are still his. Loved, blessed, and even in lockdown, given the chance of life in abundance. Amen. Feel free to stand in your living rooms or wherever you are as we say together the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father 
Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And if you are standing, you could remain standing or sit or kneel as we pray in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, as we pray to the Father and our prayers today are brought to us by Mother Susan Wheeler Kiley, who is our assistant priest in this United Benefice. Let us pray for the church and the world, and let us bring our own needs and petitions to Almighty God. Lord, our shepherd, we pray that you will protect us from all danger, especially in this time of lockdown, by keeping watch over us. Guide us towards green pastures, where we can be nourished by your word, and lead us to pure, still waters, where we can be refreshed by your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We especially pray today for all of our clergy who, through the internet and social media, are keeping us in touch and sharing words of encouragement. Be with our congregations who are missing the physical fellowship of worship, word and sacrament. We thank you that we are together spiritually. We pray for those who cannot be with us because they do not have access to computers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today in our diocese, we pray for the Merton Priory Team Ministry. We pray for the Team Rector, Mark Emmonson. For Alison Judge, the team vicar. For Belema Alagoa and Duncan Swan, both assistant priests. And for Nick Mayhew Smith, the reader. We pray for the parish of Holy Trinity and St Peter, South Wimbledon. For Holy Trinity and the Priory Church of England primary schools. In the Worldwide Anglican Communion, we pray for the Nippon Seiko Kai, the Anglican Communion in Japan, and for the Most Reverend Nathaniel Makato Umetsu, Primate of the Nippon Seiko Kai, and Bishop of Hokkaido. And we pray for the bishops, priests and people in his province. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world that was given to us as an inheritance, on the understanding that we would care for it as shepherds care for their flocks. Teach us to look after our beautiful planet and care for it wisely, whilst sharing its gifts more fairly and working together with all of its inhabitants to ease its sufferings. Be with the leaders of all nations. Be with our own government, especially our Prime Minister Boris Johnson, for the leader of the opposition Keir Starmer, for all cabinet members. Give them the foresight to act with true concern for the well-being of the people they are meant to serve. 
give them the wisdom to invest in long-term solutions that will help prepare for or prevent future outbreaks of this pandemic. We pray for Her Majesty the Queen and for her dignified service to this land. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our families and friends who need to hear the voice of Jesus, the Good Shepherd, who knows every one of them by name, who offers rest to the weary and salvation to sinners and life eternal to all who accept him into their lives. Be with those who are lonely, afraid and anxious. Be with those whose only view of the world is the street outside their window. Defend them all from despair. Be with those in our community who daily put themselves at risk as they carry out their essential work caring for us. Nurses, doctors, carers, public service workers. We pray you will keep each one of them safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those we know who are lost in illness and ask you to reassure them with the knowledge that you are watching over them in their suffering and that many are praying for their recovery. We pray especially for those whose surgery has been delayed and those whose cancer treatment is on hold. We pray for all those who are known to us this morning, asking for their healing in body, mind and spirit. And by name we pray for Nikki, Enid, Alec, Helen, Linda, Ruth, Diane, Mick, Brian, Jennifer and Reuben. We also pray for David and his prayer that he will receive lots of work to pay his bills and to help other people that are less fortunate than him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those families who have been bereaved at this time, whether their loved ones have been taken through COVID-19 or through other reasons. Especially, we pray for the Bogle, Forbes and Ladit families. Lord, give them comfort and give them the support that they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So we pray for all those who have died and for those who ache with sorrow in the loss of their loved one. May those we now name before you find rest in the Spirit's embrace as you welcome them into the great sheepfold, safe in your keeping forever. We pray for the repose of the souls of Marlene, Maggie and Ruth. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer our prayers now for all people and their situations, for lives that are going through upheaval or distress caused by the COVID-19 pandemic and in circumstances which only you can change. Holy Shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house, where we celebrate with you forever. Amen. Merciful Father, 
accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And feel free to stand for the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And we now sing our next hymn. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of divine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give you thanks almighty and eternal father and in these days of easter to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works for by the mystery of his passion Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of 
of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Blessed Mary, Saint Joseph, the Holy Innocents, Saint Mark, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray in the words Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of all sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia!
Let us pray. Merciful Father, you gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the Good Shepherd, and in his love for us to lay down his life and rise again. Keep us always under his protection, and give us grace to follow in his steps, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us for our 10 o'clock Mass, according to the book, The Common Worship. And so Marlene's funeral, Marlene Bogle's funeral, is on the 20th of May. But before that, do enjoy your bank holiday this Friday, the 8th. And thank you for those who have continued to take up the invitation to pay your tithes by direct debit, standing order, or bank transfer. We much appreciate it. And for those who are thinking about it and would like to do so, then do contact me for the relevant church's bank details. Do join us again next week, or indeed during the week for our morning and evening prayer, Tuesday to Thursday. But before that too, there is evening prayer today at six o'clock with Cicelyn, our reader in the United Benefice. The Lord be with you. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you, and all those whom you love and pray for this day and always. Amen. Our Mass is ended, but our service to God continues as we go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you.